Well, hello, good evening, and good morning to some. Hi, my name is Regina from Regina's Baking Academy, where we have learned that baking is cool. So I just wanted to pop in tonight because I am making oatmeal raisin cookie dough. So last night I came on and I made the um, lemon crunch cookie dough. So I decided, why don't I come on tonight and just do a quick live and show you guys what happens when you do your mise en place and how much faster it is. So when I did the lemon crunch cookie dough last night, I came in and I basically put stuff together and we went through that together um, from scratch. You know, I, I measured out the flour, I measured out the sugar, I measured out... Um, the butter and everything so what I did this time guys um, I I did my me supplies in advance what me supplies is not only hey Jason not only did I have um, my ingredients which is uh, important to have right you want to make sure you have all your ingredients but this time I also put certain things together in advance so what I want to do is like if you were if you were with me last night, if you weren't, check out my video. Um I did it yesterday on lemon crunch cookies, so I want you to go ahead and check that out. And look at the time it took me to do it. Now, of course, part of it was the conversation we were having, right? I was giving you what I was doing and how I was doing it. We did a little measurement. So we had some conversation. However, it took me roughly 40 minutes or so to do the whole process let's just see how long it takes me now being that i prep some things in advance so we're going to go through this in real time okay so what i did in advance is i did the mise en place mise en place means not only did i make sure i had my ingredients but i also put some together so let's see what i did okay so this recipe is for oatmeal raisin cookies. So that means we have our, our dry ingredients. And for this recipe, the wet would be considered when you cream the butter and the sugar together. And then you incorporate, um, after you do that, you add your eggs, you add your extract, whatever that's going to be. And then you incorporate your dry ingredients. Okay? So... It's different from when you're baking cakes and things like that because your wet ingredients are used to like the, the, the eggs, the milk, the other things. So that's like wet and dry. And we did some things on that. But tonight we're focusing on the time saved when you prep some of your things in advance. So that's what we're doing tonight. Okay? So I'm going to get a spatula and we're going to get started. All right, I see this. It's like my phone has some eggnog. <laughs> so if y'all don't know by now, I love my spatulas. And I happen to have several. I'm not ashamed to say that, guys. When you've been baking as long as I have, you acquire some things. Some of the things you need in the kitchen. So before I start, let me not be rude. Let me read the ingredients so you know what I need to have, okay? So, I need butter, brown sugar, granulated sugar, eggs, vanilla, AP flour, which is all-purpose flour, baking soda, cinnamon, salt, uh, I think I did that right. I hope I did. Three cups of oatmeal, one cup of raisins. Okay, great. So, the recipe says that I need all of those things. Now, I have to do the directions, right? So, not only do you have to have all of your ingredients, you have to make sure you follow the directions. So, let's get started. Okay. So, the first direction, it says to cream the butter and the sugars together. Okay. And this recipe calls for one cup of butter or two sticks of butter or 
16 tablespoons of butter. See? It's important to know your math, guys. Basic math. Addition, subtraction, fractions. That kind of stuff will save you, especially in the kitchen. And when you're measuring things like baking soda and baking powder, it's important to know the difference between a half teaspoon, right? Because if you measure too much, it, it impacts your overall outcome, and you don't want that. So right now, I'm putting in two sticks of butter. They've been at room temperature, so they're perfect and good to go. The reason why I'm using a bowl this time and not using my mixer, for two reasons. One, that mixer's not small, and I don't want to lift it, have to clean it and all that. And you know what? A little bit of elbow grease when you're making cookies, it's not a bad thing. Now, when I'm making my cakes, guys, which I will be making a big cake tomorrow, I will be using the mixer. You can believe that. And I'm making frosting, too. I'm making Swiss buttercream. I'm making um, chocolate frosting, all from scratch. So we're going to have fun with that. But that's tomorrow. Let's get back to right now. Okay. So I had to add the two sticks of butter. Now with the sugars. So guys, I'm going to tell you a little secret. I happen to know someone that knows a little something about sugars. So, the Jason Hodge has been talking about the Demerara sugar and the taste, right? He talks about this Demerara sugar like I talk about frosting. Now frosting, the frosting. So now it's the sugar, the Demerara. So, I was talking to my partner, Shauna. Shauna Sweet Spot and more, and we were talking about the Demerara sugar. So I said tonight, for the oatmeal raisin recipe, I'm going to use, listen guys, I'm using the Demerara sugar with the granulated sugar. And I was so happy to have a Nutribullet because I was able to grind that sugar down to a powder. I'm going to show you all. I don't want you to think I'm playing. See? And, listen guys, it looks almost like wheat flour, okay? So, when you are doing things like this, if you plan on doing a lot of it, you want to put it in a container and label it. So, let's get back to what we're doing, because this is how I get in trouble, because I like to explain what's happening. What's happening? <laughs> so, now I'm creaming the sugars with the butter after I put it in the bowl. I'm so excited to use this Demerara sugar. Oh, goodness. I was so happy. All right, so now I'm putting it all in the bowl. As you can see, I already had it pre-measured. So all I had to do was pour it in the bowl and mix it. Now, when you do stuff in advance like this, it not only saves you time, but it saves you a mess. You're going back and forth. you dipping, measuring cups and such. I already did that. Guess where this goes, guys? It goes where? Back there in the sink. Right there. So now I have to cream the butter and the sugar together. So listen, when you're creaming the sugar and the butter, because I ground this Demerara sugar to such a uh, like consistency, almost like 10x sugar, I have to be mindful not to initially mix it hard. So first what I want to do is to make sure I incorporate the butter and the sugar together before I really go in and start doing a good, you know, creaming it. And the reason why I'm being careful is because if I do it too rough, some of the Demerara sugar could, you know, go all over the place. And we want all that yummy goodness in the bowl. Okay? Here we go. I'm so excited. You don't even understand. I want to see how these cookies come out. I promise you quality assurance sake, I'll have to let you know. And hey, here's what's so pretty. Oh my goodness, y'all. Okay, I'm going to show you. Because I don't want you to think I'm playing any games. Look how pretty that dough looks already. And that's just the, the creamy part. <laughs> I believe you, Jason. Yes, I do. So right now what I'm doing is I'm taking my time 
the cream, the butter, and the sugars together because it's a lighter consistency. So it's worth it to take a couple more minutes to let that flavor come together nice. And the butter just, mm, something about it. So that's what I'm doing right now, guys. And I'm going to show you what it's looking like. It's really good. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to show you. Don't worry. See that? Do you see that? Do you see that right there? Okay. So, I'm going to do this for about a minute or so more because I really want to get a nice light fluffiness to the cream, sugar, and butter before I add the eggs. Right? Guys, I'm telling you, it looks so good. Listen, when Jason first told us about the Demerara sugar, I bought like a two pound bag and then I just looked at it. It's like looking at a newborn baby. You don't want to, you don't want to touch the baby the wrong way. You don't want to wake up the baby to turn because it looks so pretty. I was looking at that Demerara sugar. I was like, wow, that look good. It was a little expensive, but it's worth it. So I was like, I don't know, you know, what I'm, what I'm really going to do with this sugar. So I started using it in my tea. <laughs> it was really good. It's really good. But what I noticed about the Demerara sugar is that it didn't dissolve as quickly as the other brown sugar that I had. And I don't use white sugar in my tea anymore. So it's either brown sugar um, or um, honey. Okay? And at first I thought it was because um, I didn't boil the water hot enough. But it's the same amount of time that I boiled the water for my tea. But what I came to realize, guys, is that the Demerara sugar is a, a stronger crystal. So it doesn't dissolve easily. And that just tells you that it's rich. Let me tell you, when I had that cup of tea, it was it was over. Like I was I was done. I was like, this is some good. I only used half the amount of the Demerara sugar in my tea that I used for the brown sugar. That's how good it is. And I'm telling you, you got a taste. It's just really yummy, guys. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try it tonight. Sean and I were talking about it. And I said, yeah, I'm gonna, I may do it next time. Then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it tonight. But the thing about the Demerara sugar, when you're using it in baked goods like cookies and such, you have to grind it up. Because it does not dissolve the same way the, the regular brown sugar dissolves, okay, or the granulated sugar. So if you don't grind it up with a bullet or a ninja or something like that, and you're making cookies, it's not going to come out the way it's supposed to. So I was thankful that Shauna told me that because I was about to just pour it in and she was like, no, 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 you got to grind that up, sugar. So I was like, okay, so she didn't say sugar. I'm just saying. In my head, I would have said, no, 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 sugar. Right? But Sean was like, no, don't do that. You got to grind it up. So I did that. Now, let me show you guys something right now. I have to show you. I've been talking, but I've been whisking. Not whisking, but you know, letting this cream and butter get nice and fluffy. Let me show you what it looks like now. Do you see that? Can you see that right there? Okay, all right. So, that's part one. Cream the sugar and the butter together. So we got that done. Now the next step is to add the eggs one at a time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. When I tell you I'm excited, I mean that. So now y'all know the rule of thumb. You never crack the egg into your your primary ingredients just in case the egg isn't good because if you do it over it you could destroy your whole stuff and have to start from scratch okay and you don't want to waste product so i'm just going to take this bowl crack the egg and 
And the reason why you add one egg at a time is because the egg, as you see, is, is liquidy, right? So you don't want to um, add both of them in. You want to make sure you thoroughly incorporate it with the cream sugar, with the butter and sugar, all right? So you got to take a little time to do that. If you do it together, two eggs versus one at a time, it's harder to incorporate into the um, the creamed sugar and butter. And you want to make things easy. It may seem like you're doing, um, you, you're you taking a step, you know, a shortcut, but it's not worth it, guys. So it just makes sense if it says to do one egg at a time. On this, you follow the instructions, seriously. Unless you have a mixer, but when you're doing it by hand and you get all that liquid going on, it just takes longer to incorporate. So you may as well just do it right. Let me show you what I'm talking about, guys. I'm going to show you. So easy to do it. Mm. See? Okay. Got that. So now we do the second one. Okay. And another reason why I crack the egg into the, um, a separate thing, because sometimes when you crack eggs, a shell or something may get in it. So if you do it in a separate container, you could take that shell out and then add it to the egg. That's also why it's important to make sure your hands are clean. Because you're touching food that you're gonna share with other people. So cleanliness is very important in the kitchen, okay? So now I'm just incorporating the egg. And it's easier to do it because I don't have all of that liquid fighting against each other. Now it's working together and becoming friends. Okay? But when you're doing it in the bowl, you have to use a little elbow grease and that's okay. And that butter didn't take long to cream because guess what? It was like using 10x sugar, the demerara, because it was such in a powder form. It was way easier to mix it in when I had to cream it with the butter. Way easier. Or way more easy, depending on how your grandma's situation works. Okay. That goes there. So now I have to add my extract. My vanilla. And remember, I don't even... This, I could do it over it, but I'm not. And so I have to add a teaspoon. That's what the recipe says. A teaspoon of vanilla. So I'm going to measure a teaspoon of vanilla. One teaspoon. And guess what? You know how sometimes you think you should put more than the um, recipe says? Well, sometimes that's not a good idea. Because depending on the type of extract it is, it may overpower to cook the other complementary flavors. So unless you want that to be the dominant flavor and you're doing something different, just follow the instructions, guys. Okay? So now I have mixed in the vanilla extract. So now I have to incorporate my dries. So, I have a proprietary blend, huh? Ah, <laughs> oh, sucky, sucky. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm adding the dries. So my dries for this is the flour, is the baking soda, and the salt, cinnamon, and a couple other nice little surprises that I put in my cookies. The recipe calls for cinnamon, but I like to, to kick it up a level. So, when you incorporate dry ingredients, remember you gotta fold it in easy because if you do it rough, then you can have flour all over the place. So remember guys, be mindful, okay? Take your time, make sure you fold it in, and once you get it in there, then you could give it a, a firmer, you know, mix it. See? 
You just got to be patient with the process, guys, okay? So here we go. You want to make sure it's in there. Now that I see that it's basically in there, I could go a little more vigorous. But I'm not going to overdo it because you don't want a tough cookie. So you want to blend it just enough to make sure your dries and your cream mixture are thoroughly incorporated. Okay? Which just means you want to make sure it's mixed in there good together. Okay? You want to make sure all that yumminess is happening. And becoming friends with each other. Okay. It's looking good, y'all. And it didn't take long. And the reason why it didn't take long is because I had everything done in advance. That's the that's the um, benefit of the prep. Now, there's two kinds of prep. There's the prep where you do everything one time. Or you could mix some things together in advance. Okay. Here you go. See that? Now, the other part is I have to add three cups of oat, oatmeal. See that? Mm. Okay. I'm going to add the raisins too. And it says a cup of raisins. So I like to put a little more than a cup. So this is a little more than a cup. And remember, I measured everything out. See? Look at that. Now, you guys tell me how long that took versus when I did the lemon cookies last night. And I, and I did everything at, you know, during, the, during our time together. Now, remember, oats are a dry ingredient, too. So, I still have to be careful how I incorporate it in the recipe. Okay. Okay. Now, once I see it's kind of in there, then I could go in a little extra. But remember, you don't want you want to keep this stuff in your bowl, so you just gotta be careful with it. Remember how I tell y'all: be patient with the process. Sometimes we get so excited or we want it done, right? So, we go a little extra. But take your time. Okay? Alright. And now I'm mixing just to make sure that the raisins are evenly distributed. Because who wants to pick up an oatmeal raisin cookie and you don't have raisins in the oatmeal raisin cookie? Okay? Okay, so it's coming together. I'm going to show you guys. Hold on. I didn't forget you. See that? There you go. What y'all talking about? <laughs> oh, no. You don't get the secret. I'm going to give you the base and I'm going to make that good. But the secret is a secret for a reason. <laughs> okay now guess what guys this cookie dough is ready to go it's done it's done the only thing i have to do now is pan it and bake it now i'm not going to do that tonight because i didn't preset the oven and that takes about five or ten minutes but I could preset the oven. What y'all think? Think I should do so? A little bit? Maybe? Let's see. I'm going for it. I'm going for it, guys. I think I'm going to do it. Uh-oh. 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 Ah, you heard that? Preset the oven. So what that means is we're gonna have some oatmeal raisin cookies tonight. Yay! I wanna see how they came out. And you know what? 
I know the recipe says, now I've been baking these oatmeal basil cookies for over 15 years. And I've always, when I first started, I just added a cup of raisins. I followed the recipe, cup of raisins, three cups of oats, the, the butter, the sugar, the flour, everything is said I did it the way to get the foundation right. But what I noticed is, I like a little more raisins. So I put maybe like a uh, one cup plus a quarter more, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more. What what oatmeal raisin cookie can't use a little more raisins, y'all? So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Let's see, just a wee bit more. Here we go. I'm just gonna do one tray, one tray of cookies, y'all. Because you know, I don't think I sleep good not knowing how they came out. <laughs> okay. Now I'm just making sure the cookies are incorporated. But I'm not aggressively stirring it up because you want a nice moist cookie. We want the cookies to come out nice and, and um, you know, moist in the middle. And if I overwork the cookie dough, they could come out tough. And that's not what we want. We want a nice good cookie. So let's get this party started. Okay. just happen to have a cookie sheet in the oven because you never know. <laughs> so, got my handy dandy wax paper. I did make an apple pie today. That's why I had the cookie sheet in the oven. Anytime I bake um, stuff with fillings that have like liquid, I put it on the cookie sheet because sometimes what happens is the juices may spill over and so you don't keep a mess in the oven, it falls on the cookie sheet. So the cookie sheet was already in the oven, guys. True story. So what I'm gonna do now, what am I gonna do? I'm going to make, I'm gonna pan some cookies. So let's get that done, all right? So as I've told some of you before, my countertop space is prime real, prime real estate. So with prime real estate, sometimes you just gotta move some things around. So that's what I'm getting ready to do now so I can pan these cookies, okay? Are y'all with me? Are you with me? Are you here? Put something in the chat and let me know you're here. Put something up there. Hi, Marina. Thanks for joining me. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this here, this board, this cutting board I'm putting on my countertop space because the cookie sheet may be a little hot because it was in the oven. <laughs> no problem. So, anytime you have something that came fresh out the oven and it's a little warm, you got to protect your counter space. So what I did is I put the cookie, the cutting um, board on the countertop to protect it, okay? And then I put the cookie sheet on top of that. So that's a hack if you want to know. And got the scooper so I can make even measurements. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of water. So I could dip it around. Okay. And the reason why I do the water so it can have an easy release. Okay, let's go guys. So I'm gonna do maybe 12. And then the rest I'll just put in the fridge and do some tomorrow. But this helps me make the cookies come out nice and even, guys. 
<laughs> Thank you, Shona. So, it didn't take long because why? I prepped in advance. So, Mise and Plus, when I was in um, culinary school, Mise and Plus meant that you had things in place. Now, there's two ways to do that. You could have in place meaning that you have all your ingredients, right? You could do the extra step of pre-mixing some of your ingredients so that when it's time to actually do the recipes, you have, you know, it doesn't take you as long. So you have more time to maybe do something else. And I think because I did have everything pre-measured, I have energy to bake some cookies right now. How cool is that? With the new demerara sugar that I've added to. Did y'all hear that? If you heard that and I heard that, that means the oven is ready. That didn't take long, did it? And guess what? I'm almost ready to put these bad boys in the oven. See that? See what preparation gets you? Let me stop that. Okay. So now, another neat little trick that Shauna showed me is just to press it down a little bit in the middle so that the cookies are flattened. Cause I, I leave them lumped up, but we're going to try to get some uniformity here. It's nice when everything look kind of the same. Sometimes. While we're all different and unique, and that's wonderful, but uh, when it comes to cookies and things like that, you want some uniformity, right? So I'm just going to Push it down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. There we go. Everybody get some love, get some love. And guess where these bad boys are going? In the oven. So what I'm not doing, guys, is I'm not taking a picture of those cookies until they are out the oven and on the stove. <laughs> And if anybody was with me about a week and a half ago, you know why. <laughs> okay, so now this part is done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap the rest up and put it away so that in the first thing in the morning, I'm going to... Uh, right now, I'm, I'm not going to have people in the video, but you can comment... And um, if you want to share something, you definitely could do that. Okay? So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to properly wrap the cookie dough. The way I do it is I use wax paper. And then um, underneath is the aluminum foil. And then I put it in a Ziploc bag. Right? And then... If I have a lot of cookie dough in the refrigerator, I label it so that way I don't get confused about which, what's what, okay? All right. Now, that didn't take long, guys, because I had things prepped in advance. Now, I'm going to get up in a few hours, and I'm going to make a lot of cookies. Like a lot. <laughs> make a few dozen for tomorrow. So, let me show you. See that yumminess? Do y'all notice that there's some raisins over there that's like in there, in there? Okay, I'm going to handle that right now. I'm just going to move it over because we want the oatmeal raisins all to get love. We want all those cookies to have a generous amount of raisins. I don't want anyone feeling left out in the oatmeal raisin community. <laughs> so 
So first I wrap it up. With the last paper, and then I bring over the foil to seal it in. Okay. And then I put it in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> there you see? In the Ziploc bag it goes. I'll tell you, these Ziploc bags are a lifesaver. And what's really cool about the way I wrap it is that I can use these Ziploc bags again for a different type of preparation. Okay? So. Now, when tomorrow comes in the morning, I'll be ready to go. So you see, guys, when you do your meat supplies, when you're doing your recipes, and you take the time to do it in advance. Now, sometimes we're running busy. We may not have the time, and that's understandable. You know, we all have a lot of things we're doing. If it's not, you know, if it's not children, it's work. If it's not work, it's school. Sometimes it's a combination of all of those things, right? So you may not always have the time to do the pre-prep work, but if, as long as you have all of the ingredients and what you need, that's really the main thing. What The way I did it this time was a matter of saving time. And I also wanted to show you the difference between what happens when you pre-prep versus when you do everything in that moment, okay? Because yesterday when I did the lemon, crunch cookie dough i did everything in that moment i measured out the flour i measured out the sugar i measured out um the butter we talked about the butter because i needed to have a three-quarter cup so we did a little measurement session in there a little mini session about tablespoons and you know how many tablespoons equal a half a stick y'all know the answer to that right do you know how many tablespoons equal a half a stick of butter Somebody put that in the comments. Just check it. See if y'all on your stuff. Do, 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 Who said that? Well, you're not that far off. If you times that by two, you're right. So, let's do this. Okay, in a stick of butter, you have, oh, I love this. You have eight tablespoons of butter in a stick of butter. This particular brand actually breaks it down for the tablespoons as well as the teaspoons. So this is a good little thing to know. One tablespoon is equivalent to three teaspoons. But as it relates to butter, for the most part, when you're using butter in your recipes, it'll say a cup of butter, uh, three quarter cups of butter, a half a cup of butter. So what does those measurements mean, right? So a uh, half a cup of butter is one stick of butter. One stick of butter is equivalent to four ounces, right? So this is equivalent. Eight tablespoons is equivalent to one stick of butter which means that each tablespoon is one half ounce, but we're going, we don't need to dig that deep tonight, okay? For the sake of what we're talking about right now, there are eight tablespoons and one stick of butter. Two sticks of butter, which is equal to one cup of butter, is 16 tablespoons of butter. Yesterday, for the Lemon Crunch cookie recipe, I needed three quarter cups of butter so that meant i needed one stick plus a half which meant that i needed 12 tablespoons of butter or i needed a stick and a half of butter or i needed three quarter cups of butter but it's kind of important to know those things because sometimes you want to scale your recipe up or or, or do it in half and you figure like well, what what does that mean right so if I was only making a half portion of something, I would need to know the measurement for the butter, the sugar, the salt, right? So 
that's what it means. So when you're doing butter, each stick of butter has eight tablespoons. And two sticks of butter is equivalent to one cup. Okay? That's eight ounces. Because remember, the box is, is a pound. So two is is two eight ounces that's equivalent to two cups of butter. Okay? So that's enough from the uh the measurement the measurement section. This has been Measurements and more brought to you by Regina's Baking Academy, where we get to learn that baking is cool, but it's a little work, and that's okay. That's what we're here for. Now, let's check those cookies, guys. Hold on. I'm going to take you with me, but we're not going too close to the fire because we don't want to get burned. <laughs> Hold on, okay? All right. Oh, Y'all, let me tell you they come out. Okay, okay. I'm standing back. <laughs> Y'all see that? Okay. I'm standing back, though. I promise I'm standing back. <laughs> Shauna, you are aces, my dear. I will be using that, uh, that, that, um, scooping from now on, pushing it down. It looks so pretty. It looks so pretty. Now, it's in the taste, guys. So, got a few more minutes, and we're going to find out how the oatmeal vase cookies taste. Right now, what I'm going to do is just put the stuff in the sink and run a little soapy water. Because, you know, it's important to clean up as we go along. So, that way, I don't have to do all of that. You missed it. Jason, all right, I'm going to show you one more again. Hold on. For you, I'm going to show you one more again. Okay. Now, you know what happened with me in the oven before. So. Hold on now. You ready? You see? There you go. Did you see that? <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. So, those are the cookies. They're looking pretty good, y'all. So, um, we only have a few more minutes. And then they come out the oven. Yay! Yumminess everywhere. Yumminess everywhere. And you know what's really cool? I have two of my beautiful children here. And one of them loves oatmeal raisin cookies. So, maybe he'll get some before he heads out. Nothing says love. Like oatmeal razor cookies, freshly made in Regina's Baking Academy. Ew. <laughs> so, let me tell you guys something. True story. I was talking to Shauna earlier from Shauna's Sweet Spot and more. And earlier today, this face was not smiling. It was upside down. You know how sometimes you... you you think you have a plan and you you want to do some things, but you get a little distracted or something came up that was totally out of your area of um, consideration and, and you just kind of just threw you off a little bit. Well, that happens to me today. <laughs> I was that happy. And, you know, Shona and I were talking and I said to her, you know, Shona, I made an apple pie today. Like, I did it real quick. It was good and everything. I mixed it. You know, the flavors got in there. That cinnamon was saying something. That nutmeg was just having a conversation. And that little bit of clove was everything. But I didn't even share it. And, and we laughed at that. Because if you know me, you know that I'm not really um, Facebook fabulous, right? I'd, I'd rather not on social media and showing us the same way so for me to be talking about 
I've, I should have captured that moment because it was really a teachable moment. Um, that's, that's growth. So even though I was a little frustrated because things didn't go the way I planned or didn't plan. So that was a lesson for me, a reminder of keep planning because when you don't plan, you know, that's a failure. You know, when you fail to plan, things happen. So we laughed at the fact that we were like, yeah, you you were concerned about doing a live for the sake of providing content. Whereas before, I didn't want anything to do with providing content or sharing or at least on in the social media space. But I thought it was so interesting that as you grow, it's not that you won't have challenges. As I've grown in this in this arena, sharing with you guys how to bake and how to be aware, me supplies to paying attention and being mindful. I too continually learn those things. And you you know, as you elevate, the challenges are different. So we may as well play big, right? Because we're gonna have challenges anyway. So why let them be small? All right, guys, let's go check and see what these cookies are doing. Let's go see what the cookies are doing. They're almost ready. Mm, 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 mm. We got a situation, y'all. It's a good one. I'm stepping back, though. I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> I'm not taking any chances. Okay. So we just got a couple more minutes, guys. I'm country. Did y'all see my collard greens? If y'all didn't see my collard greens, <laughs> don't judge me. I got collard greens out here because I was going to um, prep them now, so I wouldn't have to do it tomorrow. <laughs> they smell so good. Like, they smell so good. I can't wait to taste them because this is the first time that I've used the Demerara sugar. But I'm telling you, that flavor, when I put it in my tea, guys, it's the best. So, I'm going to leave those cookies in for maybe like a minute more, and then they are coming out because they're already cooked through, and I like it to be a little crispy on the outside and they're kind of moist inside. Yeah, you already know I'm about to stay away from that oven. I'm holding on to my uh, my technical equipment for <laughs> dear life. Okay, they are ready. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Guys, I'm about to take them out. We're about to reveal. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. We're about to reveal these beautiful, beautiful oatmeal raisin cookies with the new addition of the Demerara sugar. So let's do this, y'all. Taking them out the oven. I'm going to touch them to see if they need to be in there a little bit longer. To be honest, they look good. Let me show y'all. Let me show you. See, they look good. But I'm thinking maybe just another minute, you know? I just want to do it one more minute, just my spirit. You know, when you when you got that feeling, you better follow it. So I'm going to follow it. And I'm just going to put them in for one more minute. And then we will be rocking and rolling, y'all. So just, just bear with me one more minute. It will be good. So while I'm doing that, guys, I'm just uh, prepping my stuff so I can be able to clean up my utensils. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. If I wasn't um, talking with you now, 
I'd be in here doing the dishes and stuff, but the noise would be loud, and I don't want to be rude. So, but anybody knows me knows is when the cookies in the oven, I'm cleaning up. Thank you. Because I don't want to clean up after you eat a cookie. I may have to make some tea. This is a, a, a monumentous occasion. <laughs> we are talking Demerara goodness in the cookies. Talk about game changer, guys. Well, since I'm not going to run the water and have that be an issue, what I will do is put some dishes away. I can't do that. Yep. So, because that's not going to be too loud. <laughs> so, as soon as I put these measuring cups away, I think it will be time to take out the cookies, the oatmeal raisin, new improved, with the Demerara sugar. Now, I'm going to tell you how I got the Demerara sugar um, in a powder form. I used my Nutribullet and, and um, posted. I didn't post it, to, but I um, just let it do its magic. But it was loud. <laughs> and I was so excited. So excited. Okay, guys. We're about to do it. I'm about to take them out the oven and put my cookie dough in the refrigerator. Let me tell you, tomorrow morning, it's going to be smelling yummy, yummy in here. They're going to be knocking on my door talking about what you got in that oven. I'm going to be like, cookies, cookies, and more cookies. That's what I got. <laughs> okay, guys. It's time. It is time. Who remembers where that came from? It's one of my favorite animated feature films. Here we go. Perfect. Oh. Y'all, let me tell you something. Okay. Off. Now. Now. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Look at that. Okay, now y'all already know I fit to take a picture now. Because this is the maiden voyage of Demerara sugar being used. All right. Yes. Yes, Lion King, it is time. Yes, that's when Simba returned to the Proud Land to claim his rightful place from Scar, his deceitful, cunning uncle. But that's another story. Right now, it is time for these cookies. <laughs> so I'm going to get a spatula. All right. Let me do a zoom in. Ready? Hold on. That wasn't me. That was the cookie singing, y'all. <laughs> oh, snap. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm not going to remove them because they're just out the oven. I'm just going to take the spatula and separate the ones that's really close to each other. That's all. So when I do remove them, I won't break the cookies. Okay? So this cookie sheet is a little, is one of my smaller ones. I have bigger ones. I ain't but when you have a cookie that's spread like this, you definitely want to use a larger cookie sheet so that way they can have the room to do what they do. And that's... Did y'all hear that? Did you hear that? 
Did you hear that? Okay. I don't know about y'all, but I heard that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't do it with all of them because I'm trying to be good. I'm really trying to be good. Y'all, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the smell is just so, so good. Okay, here we go. I got to take off my glasses. For quality assurance purposes, this episode, I have to taste it to let you know, is it really worth the hype? Okay. Look at that. Look at that nice golden brown with just a hint of little, little, little brown on the outside. Look. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. Can you see? Can you see it? Mm. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Delicious, y'all. This demon river is the stuff. Mm. I know I couldn't wait. Regina McGrady. Now it's Christmas. Okay, guys. Delicious. No job. And the raisins are nice and plump. Mm. I'm sharing these cookies tomorrow, guys. Yeah. I can't even have tea. I'm just going to have me a straight glass of water because this is sweet enough. Really good, y'all. You hear that? You hear that? Mmm. Mmm. Well, this has been Regina from Regina's Baker Academy, introducing in an updated version of oatmeal raisin cookies, and I replaced the dark brown sugar, which has always been good and yummy, very delicious, with Demerara brown sugar. Now... With the Demerara, I had to grind it because Shauna let me know that it doesn't dissolve. Real cookie? Oatmeal raisin? Okay, babe. You want to take that downstairs, mommy? Thanks. I was able to give my son a cookie. Oatmeal raisin are his favorite. Let me know how you like that one, okay? All right. All right. I'm excited. These are some big cookies. Look at that. Look at that. So, what I'm going to do is take them off the cookie sheet. I'm going to take them to work. I, I told um, one of my coworkers I was going to bring in cookies tomorrow. So, I'm definitely going to... Um, bring it <laughs> so 
I'm super excited. I'm a little tired, but it's a fake tired. But I got to get up in like three hours because I planned on making some um, chocolate chip, lemon crunch, ginger cookies, and oatmeal raisin. So, I don't know if they're guilt-free, but they, they doggone delicious. They are doggone delicious. And what's really great about them is not heavy. It's not like, you know, with Southern is just sweet. And the overpowers where you can't really enjoy the other flavors, you know, so you can enjoy the oats, you can enjoy the raisins, you know, um, and it's really just a complete treat. It's really good, y'all. So I like it. I really do. And I'm so glad that between Jason and Shauna, I've been introduced to a new addition for some of my cookies. So, this is Regina from Regina's Baking Academy, where we get to learn that baking is cool. Tonight, we did a different version of mise en place because we did some pre-prep work before we actually before I came to to do the live. So, there's always different options of how to do stuff, and I just wanted to show you the difference between what I did yesterday when I made the lemon crunch cookies versus what. The time it took me to do the oatmeal raisin today. And I had so much time that I was able to make a, a tray of them and do them just like that. And we did that together, y'all. So how cool was that? <laughs> so I'm going to say goodnight for now. Because I do have to get up in a few hours. Yeah, like 5.30. So if I get a good three or four hours sleep. Matter of fact, if I get three hours sleep, I get up in the morning, I'm going to knock out some oatmeal raisin and chocolate chip cookies. No problem. And maybe some ginger because it's the holidays time. And ginger cookies are so nice and yummy around. They're good all year, but it's something special around Christmas and Thanksgiving. It's just really good. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay? So good night for now. And remember what I always say. Be patient. With yourself and be patient with each other remember if you are new to the baking um family and you don't feel overwhelmed right because if you know how to do stuff in your kitchen it's learning a new thing and it could be fun so baking is cool i think baking is cool and it's fun and it's yummy and i always say the food doesn't talk back the cupcake's not going to say you didn't put enough in the cup. The The cookies aren't going to argue with you. The sugar's not going to get upset. The only time your food talks back is when you finish with it and it comes out the oven and you taste it. Okay? So, be bold. Try something new. And if you're nervous, that's where I come in. I can help you with the process. Okay? And I'll be giving you more information about that in the real in the near future. But for right now, have a blessed evening or afternoon or morning or whatever time it is, wherever you are. Okay? Take care, and I'll see y'all later. Good night for now for me. <laughs> I'd rather good morning. Bye-bye. <laughs>